Hey, welcome back to another devlog. It's been a little bit since the last one, and unfortunately, I haven't gotten as much as I've wanted to get done, but still making progress. I am looking to get more help with this project if you're interested, as it's obviously faster having more than one person working on this game. If you would like to join, you'll need some prerequisites depending on what you'd like to do. I am looking for scripters, animators, or 3D artists and VFX artists. If you would like to do scripting, you should be knowledgeable in the API and the Lua syntax, including type annotation, object-oriented programming, and elements of functional programming. You should be familiar with and know how to set up and organize projects in a modular style. And there are some other stuff I have listed out in the form that's in the description below. So for anyone who submits a form, you should actually want to work with me on this project. If you're not all that passionate or interested, then this is not going to be the project for you. If you would like to work with me on this project, you can head to the description and fill out a Google form and thank you to anybody who does. Anyways, since the last devlog, I've been working on the next section of the game and I added a couple extra menu windows like a credit section and a change logs section. They're pretty simple, but I'll go ahead and show them to you. We'll be able to go and open up the credit section. It'll just be a list of the different people that helped work on this project. And then we can go back and the change log section will just list out the different changes that happened on what date and uh, what version of the game it's currently in. Right now it's just at version 0.00 because, you know, I'm still in the beginning stages of development. This game is not ready to be released. So once this game is ready to be released, maybe in a testing phase or an alpha phase or whatever, I'll update that value. But this is the next section of the game I'm working on. This is where all the fighting and that kind of stuff is going to happen. So when the players create a server, they'll get teleported to a reserve server like this. And then it'll spawn in the map, set up all the players, characters and stuff like that, and then spawn them inside of the map. So this is one of the maps I was working on. This is just the terrain of it. I actually already have this terrain saved inside of a instance in server storage. So let me actually just clear out all this terrain and then we can actually just play test the game so I can show you what's been done so far. All right, so it has spawned me on the map. You might notice this sphere and this semi-transparent part and you might notice some of those other ones with different colored spheres. That is how I've kind of set up the randomly spawning loot and randomly spawning player spawns. Basically, all the interactables that need to spawn on the map randomly get chosen in a specific chunk, and then I just raycast downward and pick a random position within that chunk to spawn a particular thing. I've got kind of a basic layout for the main UI, such as like the health bar, uh, XP, how much tickets and player points. This is the credits I'm going to be using for the game. Up here will show you your different items. And then, of course, there's the time, the difficulty icon, what stage we're at. And then here is our sliding difficulty bar. It's almost done. I need to um, fix a few more things with it. But right now, as you can see, as time slowly goes by, the difficulty bar slowly moves along, just like in Risk of Rain 2. I've also got some simple animations that I've just kind of been messing around with, as well as messing around with some player head tilt. So just kind of been having fun with that. You can also see that it decided to spawn the teleporter over there. That's where the teleporter is going to be at. And then inside of replicated storage, I have a bunch of different number values that represent different things like what the difficulty is set to. So the easiest difficulty is a value of one. The next difficulty is a value of two. And the hardest difficulty is a value of three. This will display how many players are in the game, what the current time that has progressed. There's uh, the current sub difficulty. So in Risk of Rain 2, you have basically your main difficulty here, which is one, two, or three, and then you have these little sub difficulties as that bar in the top right of the screen continues moving along. This will reflect what current stage we're at. And then lastly, this uh, value called coefficient represents the difficulty coefficient. So luckily, Risk of Rain 2 basically has all of the math that they use for balancing the game and calculating stuff listed on their wiki. So that saved me a whole lot of time trying to figure out how to balance the game or how to have the time in the game progress. It's all documented on their wiki. So I've just taken their math formulas for that. And let me see if I can find where I've created those functions. So I have my difficulty calculations here. These are just a bunch of different functions for calculating different stuff like enemy level, enemy rewards based on the coefficient. 
So with the coefficient, it just takes in the player factor, which is calculated by our calculate player factor function. It takes the time factor, which is calculated by the time factor function, the current time that has passed in minutes, and then the stage factor, which is also calculated by the stage factor function. And then it adds these two together, multiplies it by the time factor, and then multiplies it by the stage factor, and you get your coefficient. So for example, let me run the game here. If we were to run the game with one player and we were to go ahead and take a look at what the current coefficient is set to, we look at the coefficient, the coefficient starts out with a value of one. That is the starting coefficient for the game. This is if you had one player on difficulty, let's say just the normal difficulty. Now, if you had four players in the game, which is the max, I believe the starting value for the coefficient is 1.9. So let me just swap this value of one to four. This is just for studio testing. And if I were to run the game and then I head over to replicated storage and then I check inside of my stats, we go to the coefficient. It should be, there we go. So the value starts at 1.9. So in risk of rain two, this coefficient value starts anywhere between one to 1.9, depending on how many players are in the game. The max is 1.9 for four players, and the minimum is one for one player. And depending on how many players you actually have in the game, it will affect how much stuff is spawned in the beginning stages of the map. So you can see there's actually a lot more interactables that has randomly generated on the map, and that's because there are four players, and because you have four players, you obviously need more loot. Now let me actually comment this out because this function is trying to wait for players to join the game, but since I'm just running it, it's just gonna be waiting there forever. But after five seconds, I start the timekeeper and the timekeeper starts updating what the current time is. And as the current time increments, it's going to change the coefficient. So the coefficient's going to slowly increase over time. So with our four players, with a starting difficulty of the normal difficulty, which I've called warrior, you're going to see if we run the game here and we go over to our coefficient, you're going to see that it starts at 1.9 and then the timekeeper has started and now it's incrementing the coefficient as the current time increases. So this represents the current time in seconds. Now, the more players that are going to be in a game, the higher the coefficient is going to start at. So just for giggles, if I swap out this four to 100, so let's say we have 100 players in the game, obviously we're going to need to spawn a lot of loot and we're going to have to start the coefficient at a very high value. So if I run the game this time and we go ahead and take a look, you can already see there's a crap ton of stuff on the map, but if we look at the stats and we look at the coefficient, you can see that we've started with a coefficient of like 30.7 and it's increasing very quickly. And if we look at the map, it spawned a whole boatload of stuff. And that's because we have 100 players. We need to pick 100 spawns for them to spawn at. And then, of course, we have to spawn all the other stuff. So this blue sphere represents a small chest. This yellow sphere is a barrel. Let me see. What is this one? This represents a large chest. And then I believe, what color did I set for the player spawns? I think I might have done green. Okay, yeah, there you go. So green represents the player spawns. Obviously, I haven't created the models for these different objects yet. I'm gonna do it later, but this is just kind of how my generation system works. I have a bunch of these different chunks around the map, and then it just kind of picks a chunk to spawn something in and spawns it randomly within that chunk. I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but it works, and if it works, I don't need to change anything. So that's just kind of the stuff that I've gotten so far since the last devlog. And again, if you would like to work with me on this project, you can head to that Google form in the description. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.